nothing you cannot do Stand amazed in your presence There is joy, peace and hope There's no one like you, Jesus There's no one like you in all the earth, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God, awesome is your name. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you in all the earth. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do things you do glorious things you're a faithful God awesome is your name you do mighty things there's no one like you Lord no one like you in all the earth there's no one like you Jesus there's no one like you you do mighty things you do glorious things you're a faithful god awesome is your name you do mighty things you do glorious things you're a faithful god awesome is your name you do things you do glorious things you're a faithful God awesome is your name you do mighty things you do glorious things you're a faithful God awesome is your name you do mighty things you do glorious things Lord Hallelujah. Mighty God, I bless your name. Holy One, I worship you, for you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Age to age, you're still the same. All creation will shine.
shout your name you are God all by yourself you are God all by yourself for who you are I worship you for who you You are God all by yourself. Yeah. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. Yes. <laughs> you are God all by yourself. Mighty one, I worship you. Holy one. I bless your name you are God all by yourself yes you are you are God all by yourself age to age still the same all creation will shout your name you are God all by yourself. You are God all by yourself. For who you are, I bless your name. For who you are, I worship you. You are God all by yourself. God! 
Hallelujah. We're grateful that he truly is God all by himself, that everything is under his control. There's nothing that's happening in the earth realm that our God does not know about. We come and we bless his name as we come into the sanctuary this morning in your home this morning. As we come together just to bless the name of the Lord our God. We thank God and we, con we are in continually pr continual prayer for those who are still experiencing the, the, tr the traumatic the traumatic thing that's going on with this storm. We, we are praying for you. We're praying for all that are experiencing any kind of difficulty in life that God shows up in your situation because many times he may not change the situation, but if he can birth us to a next level in it, if he can change us while we're going through it, we come out better on the other side. We pray for supplies and food and everything to be made available to those who are in the Texas area and Mississippi and other areas that's being affected, that God is the God of a grand supply. I want to, in the spirit of Black History Month, I want to congratulate uh, Ms. Candace Morris, who has been recognized not only as teacher of the year at her school, but she's also been recognized as teacher of the year of her district. So we want to applaud all of what she's doing, the great work that she continues to do as a young educator. We applaud you. We want you to turn, I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the book of Mark, the book of Mark, chapter number four. The book of Mark, chapter number four, as we bless the name of the Lord our God. God has a plan and God has a word and God is still in complete and utter control. I want you to turn Mark chapter 4 beginning at verse number 36. Verse number six, 36 and it says on the same day when evening had come he, told, he said to them let us go over to the other side and when they had left the multitude they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. This is Jesus. Now, I want to go back, just go back to the very beginning of this chapter when you find him. When we find him in the beginning of the chapter, Jesus was beginning to teach. He was by the wayside and the people were there. So Jesus gets in one of the boats and he began to sit down so that he may be able to teach them. And so he taught them, but Jesus had a way of teaching called parables where he would take earthly stories and cause men to understand heavenly things. And so he would tell them things in parables so they could have an understanding. And, and again, I want to entitle this message, Grateful grateful for a particular reason when you talk about it here it is jesus is setting up class he's having class out by the riverside and he's got people all around listening now because he's beginning to move into the level of ministry where he's even now attracting multitudes to come and listen to what he would say so here it is when the multitudes show up he sat down to teach them because we have need to be taught there's a need there's a reason why one of the fivefold ministry gifts is that of the teacher because when we understand that the preacher is the, the the role of the preacher is to proclaim or to declare the word of God the word the, the, the purpose of the teacher is to explain break down the word of God so men could take the word and walk with that word so that word could be influenced in their life in such a way that when it was everything is said and done you walk with a power you walk in faith the Bible simply declares that faith come 
by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the teacher takes the word and breaks the word down, that, pro that prophetic word or the, the written word or whatever type in whatever form it comes, the teacher takes that word and begins to break that word down so that the people can understand it, so they can walk with that word, so they walk in a place of understanding. And if you walk in understanding, you also walk in enlightenment and empowerment. So that's what the teacher does. So Jesus said, in this place, I'm going to teach the word of God to the people who need to hear the word of God so he sat down and began to teach them about the word he began to talk to them about a sower who went out to sow and he started talking to them about the different levels and kinds of ground that there was and he began to share with them that there was different four different types of ground and he began to show them that there's something about how you prepare how you get ready and first thing like I said when the first thing I thought about Lord I thank you I came to be grateful for being in class today that I've been in class and I'm not talking about in a schoolhouse I'm talking about when God was teaching when it was that somebody was declaring somebody was explaining somebody was helping us get to a place where we could ascertain what God wanted to do in and through this house and we were in class didn't understand it but we was in class and if you're not paying attention in class somewhere you're going to be have a, somewhere you're going to be tested on the level of the information that was given when, the, when time comes I understand that, that all of us can't be in the same place at same place at the same time. But you tested on the information where you were, and you tested on the information where you were supposed to be that you may have not been. So here it is. Jesus said, Let me sit down and teach you. It's not fair for me to give you a test, and I have not taught you how to pass the test. So he began to talk about the four grounds because you got to prepare your heart for what God is getting ready to do. If you don't prepare your heart, you're not going to be ready when the test comes. He said, now listen, there's, di there's different ones. There's some I sold and I put the word out there because some people, they just, they had no root. They had, no, there was some, it just fell by the wayside. They paid no real attention. They didn't think the test was coming, but can I tell you, it doesn't matter who you are, child of God, the test is going to come. It does not matter what your name is or what your title is or where you live. The test is going to come. If you ask Houston this morning, they'll tell you a serious test just came through town. If you ask Tyler Town today, they will tell you a serious test just came through town. And it's how we respond to the test. Because the Bible said this, and I want to I want to use this scripture to make plain. The Bible said that God judgment will begin at the house of God. Many times when things happen, we talk about God get us out. God, you can move this. God, why don't you shift this? God said, no, I bought this because this is test time. This is a place where you begin to show forth if you've been in class. This is a time when you talk, don't talk faith, but walk faith. There's got to be a time when everything in you get tested because you're getting ready to be promoted, but I can't promote you until I know that you've got a percentage, the right percentage of the information to work with because that, that determines whether you get promoted or you have to go through it all over again. So I choose to thank God that I was in class at the time he was teaching. There's time when he's teaching you and he don't use the natural means. He'll use some uncommon means to teach you about some things going on in your life so you can see life from a different perspective. Get ready because God is saying it's just passing through. Grateful. Grateful. I didn't think the test was coming this way God no it wasn't about how just being prepared just getting yourself in the right place just being in prayer don't wait to pray when the storm come no baby you be praying all the time so when it is it becomes a natural order in your life to pray so when things are great you're praying and when things are not great you're praying you still believe God you don't get shaken by everything that comes along you stand your ground you stand firm the Bible said be ye steadfast and unmoved movable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. The thing that you invested in, when you invested your time in the study of the word, when you invested your time in the power of prayer, when you invested your time in the fasting, it was working together for your good, because when things show up now, you're not easily moved by the things that you see. As a child of God, as you grow and as you mature, you begin to declare unto yourself, 
I'm not going to let things outside of me disturb my peace on the inside of me. I'm not going to let things that I cannot control disrupt where I am in my walk with God because only th the only things I can control, I will control. But those things that are outside of my control, I'm going to let God handle those. Remember, he told us in the book of Peter, he said, cast all of your cares upon me because I care about you. Whatever is concerning you, just cast that because if I got you I got everything that's concerning you so you need to have peace while you're going through sit back relax put on your seat belt you're in the hand of the Bosanta. you're in the hand of God and since I'm in the hand of God no devil no demon can pluck me out I'm in the place where God can uphold me God can maintain me God is going to sustain me while I'm going through when I understand that every Ayabasata we've been going through for the last seven days from Monday even until yesterday late last night ice, wind, snow, no lights, no water but guess what? God had us in his hand God kept us through it all and so when I come in the house today I come to lift my hand and say thank you I didn't come to complain I didn't come to murmur or grumble I came to lift my hand and say Lord thank you that you kept us through the storm nobody nobody died in the process you kept your hand over us you kept your hands over the members and all of those who are connected Lord God we come to say thank you we come to say Lord we're much obliged not only that you chose us to go through the test what happens well what happened pastor if it's the devil who bring the test where the devil is in the hand of God while he's maneuvering. You remember that old scripture we talk about in Isaiah 54, 17? And in 16 it said, I'm the one that created the smith to blow on the coals. I'm the one that created the one that will give you the test. And even though he think he's in charge, I'm in charge of him. I created him. And he can only do so much. So your, come on, when your trust is in God, don't worry about that. You just keep your trust in me when you make a decision that you're not going to allow you are not going to allow to de the devil to disrupt your inner peace that's why the bible said guard your heart with all diligence for out of it will flow the very issues of life that's why the bible said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth will speak and when you're walking with God and you're going through some kind of situation you begin to speak the faith that you've been carrying all the time this is what you taught me while we was in class God you taught me that if I had the faith to believe you that Lord God whatever I believe I could receive I'm believing you for protection I'm believing you for peace. I'm, be I'm believing you for provision. I'm believing that you're the God who said it in the beginning that's going to do it all the way to the end. I'm believing you, God, that you're the God that if you saw it, you didn't let me come to it to not take me through it. I believe you, God. And I come to say today that I'm grateful for the teachings, the, le the life lessons, because as you were going through, you didn't know this test was coming, but it came anyway. You didn't know. He began to talk to him, and he began to teach him. And he said, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground, heart not prepared, heart not ready. So he said, Stone of seeds fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. And immediately it sprang up, but because it had no depth in the earth. But when the sun came up, it scored. As soon as situation showed up, it shrank to nothing. Every now and then, you begin to understand, I know I've grown. Since I didn't handle this like I used to, I know I've grown. I got some root in the ground now because I didn't go, I didn't shrink under the situation like I normally would. I know I've grown. I used to cry over that, but I'm not crying anymore. I know I'm grown. I got 
faith to believe beyond what I see. And I'm able to call those things that be not as though they do. I got faith to believe that the God who spoke it is the God who will perform it. I got faith now to believe that I'm growing to a next level. It took the test to show me how much I've grown. But because of the test, now I know I have something now that I didn't have then. Now I know. Now I know. He said some of it fell on stony ground. Because it had no root, it withered away. He said and some fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it out. And you have to look at that. You have to look at those things, those thoughts that we allow to live in our mind that's detrimental to your destiny. You have to think about Hayabasa, who I'm surrounding myself with. Are they people of faith? Are they people of destiny? Are there people who got a grind on them that's willing to go the distance? Are they people who think like you think, dream like you dream, believe like you believe? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because if they're not, they have the ability to choke that dream out of you. That thing that you saw that God showed you in the middle of the night or in the middle of the day, somebody come around you and say, that can't happen. You're not the right one. Sorry, but we can't hang out. I'm believing for something different from what you see in here. Just because it hadn't been done, does not mean it, does not mean it will not be done. Why can't God make me the first one to do it? Maybe I need to be just an original and not a copy. Why can't I just believe that God has called me for this thing? Why is it so ingrained in my spirit that I can't let it go? I can't listen to you now. But nobody has done it before you. That makes me a candidate to be a first. Just because nobody's done it don't, does not mean that it can't be done. And the mere fact that I can see it, whether it's in the invisible or not, means I can have it. There's some way for it to be produced. And God keeps working on the inside to say, just hold on to it. He said, hold on. He said, some, some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and it choked it and it yielded no fruit but hold on because when you look at those first three situations none, none of them produce what they were supposed to produce but then it gets to a but in the conversation he said but in that fourth situation there was some that fails to see the word fell on good ground. There's still hope because somebody was in class one day. Somebody was paying attention. Somebody was learning the lesson. Somebody was preparing for that day when it will come when I'm supposed to be promoted. But before my promotion can come, I got to take this test right now. He said, but he says the other seed fell on good ground and it yielded. It brought forth, it brought forth a crop that sprang up, increased and produced some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. And I won't go into that because they already did a wonderful job of teaching about the fold. But when you understand that while you're in class, what you mean in class? When God is teaching you something, no matter what the circumstance is, and you gain the knowledge, you take the knowledge with you into that next place. Because as soon as they left the crowd and they put Jesus, watch this, Jesus in the boat. Not only was the message for the people. The message was for those who were walking with him. And many times, because I'm one of Jesus' boys, he just them. No, he's talking to me too. He's telling me I need to get it 
too. And then they come back and they ask him privately. And watch Jesus. He does not keep it from them. He said, it is for you to be given the mysteries of the kingdom. I want, I'll unfold for you what I want to unfold for them. I'll tell you what I won't tell them. Because everybody don't get information at the same level. Everybody don't qualify to be in Jesus' circle. But if you qualify to be in a circle, you get information on a different level. You get revelation on a different level. You get access. One of the greatest things you'll ever get from anybody is to get for them to give you access to who they are and the wisdom that they have. Don't know it all. Don't try to know it all. Every now and then, just sit back and be quiet and let the teacher teach. Let somebody tell you something that you didn't know. I know you want to share what you know, but every now and then it will behoove us to just sit back and let the teacher teach. So here it is. Here it is. Jesus takes them to the side. The Bible said, but when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, to you it has been given. Somebody gave permission for me to give you revelation. It has been given uh, to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, those who don't have a covenant, those who don't have not covenant with me, they have no need to know what you know. Why? I tell you why. Because I'm going to expect you to work the works of God. And the only way you can work the works of God is I open up and give you revelation. You're not going to be able to walk in revelation unless, uh, Kabasha, I give you access to a level of wisdom that those who don't have a covenant have. Remember, the Bible said the natural minded man cannot receive the things of God neither can he know them because they are spiritually seen they are spiritually discerned the only way you can discern the things of God is by the spirit and not by the flesh you can't judge it by the, by the flesh you got to judge it by the spirit he says it's been given you've been given yeah, yeah, let me give you two words for that Access granted. Huh? Somebody has been given access. Access granted to a new level of revelation. Access granted to another level of teaching. Access granted. Oh, you got to know. To the interpretation of tongues. Access granted. To the interpretation of dreams. Access granted. I've given you, given you access. It's been given for you to know. So he began to teach them. He said, take heed and hear. With the same measure, watch this. Uh, yeah. he, said, he said, with the same measure that you who hear, With the same measure that you, you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. He said, now, when you position yourself, you remember Mary and Martha? And you remember when Jesus came to their house? And you remember Martha was busy doing stuff in the house, washing the dishes, sweeping the floor. And what Mary did was came and sit at Jesus' feet. And Martha got so upset with Mary not helping her do the busy work that she told Jesus on Mary. Jesus, can't you see? I'm doing all this. I knew you were coming. I knew. So I've been doing all this work, getting ready for you to be here. And now Mary ain't even helping me to do this work. She just sitting there listening. You talk to her, and Jesus said, "You flip, you missed it. You didn't understand." Mary knew when class was in session. You didn't know. Mary knew that she's not gonna have me always, but the time that she does, she need to take advantage of what I got to say. She need to get the revelation now because I'm not gonna be here later. And while you washing dishes, you're missing the things of God. While you frying chicken, you should have been sitting at my feet because I'm releasing now. I'm I'm open. I'm giving access in the moment. And while, uh, come on, sir, while church was going on, you should have been in the house. No, you were cleaning your house and you.
you missed the revelation and you wonder now why you're catching hell it's because you were in the wrong place at the wrong time because you didn't put a value on the word of God but now that the come on now that the storm is showing up now you want the revelation now I want peace and I ain't got peace it's because you are not in the right place right position at the right time Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet. Mary is in a place of peace. Mary is in a place of receiving. And here it is now, Martha is not at peace. Why? Because I'm out of position. I'm doing busy work when I should have been listening to the king. He's here at my house. How many times have God been in your house and wanted your attention, but you were too busy to give God your, he said, I'm ready to give you access. I'm ready to open up my kimono. I'm about to let you see some things you ain't seen, but you didn't have time for that because you were busy. But now when the test come, now I don't have answers to the question because I wasn't in class the day the answers were given. Watch. I don't have peace when I ought to have peace. Now watch this. Oh my God, thank you for a revelation, God. Mary and Martha had the same access. Hear me. They were in the same house. Jesus was among the both of them. He didn't pour Mary in a room and leave Martha out. They both had the same opportunity you don't hear me I wish you could hear me they both had the same opportunity what you do with your opportunity is going to matter come test time what you do in class is going to matter you can be the class clown or you can be studious you, the test is going to come and it's going to matter then what you did back here not right now not right now thank you because we're learning Grateful while you're teaching. We're absorbing while revelation is being released. So when time comes for us to release revelation, we got a reservoir underneath the hood of your car. There's a little white, there's a little white container that sits on the side of the hood. And inside of it, it has coolant in it. It's not the coolant that the motor needs, the motor has coolant in it. It is excess e-x-c-e-s-s -E -S -S. it's excess coolant what is it for in the event that that becomes a leak or in the event that it becomes low they the the the, the coolant that's in the reservoir begin to move through the motor what's the what's the desired end to keep the motor from overheating here it is now when you got access of revelation when you got excess excess truth when it comes time for truth to be made known you got plenty remember the five foolish virgins and the five wise the five wise said no I'm not wasting my oil because I know he's coming getting ready getting ready for the test getting ready for what God is going to do so Jesus said, but there was some, thank God for the sun, but there was some where the word fell, where the seed fell on some good ground. And because it fell on some good ground, it sprang up and it produced a harvest. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100. He said it became folded over and it began to just produce more and more because they positioned themselves. And watch this. He said, now I want you to understand this. The soil, we call it seed so they could understand it. And you need to understand because you're going to be teaching this and preaching this that what he was sowing was the word of God. In order for me to get through the storm that's coming, I need the word of God. Why? Because it establishes me. The Bible said when you have a shelter, you're going to be tested, but when you've been, when you've been tested, he said, and when you come out, you're going to come forth as pure gold. Why? Because you have what you needed to operate inside. Watch this. There's something about a peace. A peace that passes all understanding. 
over the last seven days with the ice and the rain and no lights and no water. And I was sitting in my chair and I was just talking to God. And I said, God, I'm not concerned about the lights. I'm not concerned about the water. I got peace about that. I want to know what is it that I'm supposed to learn inside of this? What is it that you're going to show me that's going to be beneficial to me while I'm going through this? He said, well, the first thing I want you to know is that you can always depend on me. That you can always lean on me. The second thing I need you to know, that every storm that comes, it's got a word written on top of it. It's called temporary. And no storm can come and stay. Every storm has to come and go. 11 o'clock last night, I'm walking to my house. Ice all over the car. But at 8 o'clock this morning, no ice on no car, nowhere. Why? because there's an expiration date on every storm you're going to go through there's an expiration date on the time you're going to be in that thing so when you know that there's an expiration date on it you, be you begin to have peace the second the third thing he said he said Clayton was there something that you could have done that could have made this situation a little bit more bearable. And I had to say, yes, Lord. That was something I could have done. Because this is not my first storm. This is not the first time my life's been out. This is not the first time my water's been frozen. I could have did something that would have prevented my lights from going out. He said, well, since there was something that you could have done, why not do it? I got up Wednesday morning and got on my phone and began to call some folks and say, I need this. I need to make an adjustment to my house. I need this added to my house so I don't have to go through this part again. And I said, now there's some things I couldn't control. I can't control ice out there on the highway. Can't control that. Can't control what's on the cars. Can't control it. But to change the fact that I'm in the dark, I got control over over that so you begin to control what you can't control I will not go through another one without having made some changes from things that would have made situations better because there was something I could have done so Jesus taught he taught the people then he taught the disciples watch this and you would think see now I understand even better why Jesus asked the question. So they get in the boat and they're going on to the other side. And Jesus goes down in the bottom of the boat. And Jesus goes to sleep. Why would Jesus go to sleep? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because if the teacher is giving a test, the teacher can go to sleep because it's not the test for the teacher. Oh, you don't hear me. That test was not Jesus' test. Jesus wasn't in class. The test was for those who were around him. It was their test. There was no reason for him to be up when he had he'd already done what he needed to do. Did you give them the instruction? Yes, I did. Did you teach the lesson well? Yes, you did. Did you lay it out for them to understand? Twice, I did. So now they ought to have what they need to, to pass the test. So when Jesus, when they wake Jesus up and tell him, do we care that we, no, I gave you, Kabashoto, I gave you what you needed to pass this test. I sat down with you twice, had you in class. Baby, you got to pay attention while you in class because that's going to come back on the test. He said, now, watch this. Where amongst those disciples did the seed fall? He gave four types of soil amongst those who were around him. And they thought it was for the crowd. Mm -mm. When you have a class of students, everybody is receiving on different levels. 
There's something that somebody heard on row three that somebody wasn't paying attention to on row number one. But the information was given to all. And here it is now. Jesus gets upset. And I just thank God. Thank you. I'm grateful. When you got upset with me, God, and how you came and made you chastise me it's because I wasn't paying attention in class, but you brought it back around. And the next time it came around, I was paying attention in class. And I could say, I got it. And I, you don't have to come back and teach me that again. Now I can pass my test. Now I can go to my next level. But I couldn't do it before I got the principle to work the works of God. You, oh yeah, but I saw, watch. He gets up because they ask a foolish question. They ask it out of their flesh. They ask it out of their natural. And they ask it out of fear. Lord, do you not care that we perish? He said, I never told you that we was going to drown. I told you we were going to the other side. I gave you a destiny. I gave you a destination. Why don't you hear while you're in class? You weren't paying attention. I said, let us go over to the other side. If I am who I am and I say what I say, then you got no, no matter how the storm go, blow, blow and go, I'm still going to get you to where I purpose you. Not only that, I'm in the boat with you. How many times, how many times that we get in a storm, financial storm, relationship storm, ministry storm, whatever type storm we go through, how many times that we get in the storm and we forgot who was on board with us? How many times did we worry and stress out as if God was not on board with us. How many times did we wonder, is they going to pay me? Am I going to get my check? How many times did God say, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And I stand here, God saying, I'm grateful because you always come through. You every time. And I had to learn why I was going through. Sometimes you allow disappointment to come in order for me to understand divine appointment. You had to let doors close for me to understand that was not my door. I was upset with you, but you knew what was best for me. And I come this morning and say, thank you. While it was. How about shut up? One of those nights, somebody called the house while we had no lights. And she was, a lady called my wife, she was asking, do y'all have lights? She said, no, we don't have lights but we got the Holy Ghost and we'll just be light. I said, that's the revelation. Who am I? Am I looking, from, looking for it from the external or can I let, allow it to arise from the internal and let it come forth? Can I, because inside of that place is peace. Yes, it disrupted us. Yes, it caused us to understand how much we are acquainted with our comfort. Yes, it moved us out of our comfort level and our comfort zone. Tell the truth, stay in the church. Yes, it did. But at the same time, it just let you know that God has a way, come on now, of making sure sure you still going to be up, be okay. He still has a way of saying, if you just stay right here, don't you move. Be still and know, Psalm 46, verse 10, be still and know that I still I am God, and I will be exalted. I, I'm going to be exalted. I'm going to come through. I'm going to cause everything you need to be, uh, to be made available to you. I am your God. So here it goes. The Bible said when they got ready to go over to the other side, Jesus got in the boat. But watch this. And there were some other and other little boats were also with him. There's some people that's connected to you. And because you operate in faith, they operate in faith. 
there are some people connected to you because you operate in fear they operate in fear it's what you come on now they're the little boats that's your children that's people around you that's people connected to you people that know you know you to be a man of God and they see you operating in a level of fear and not faith and they say what happened to your faith and then they begin to see okay and then God said come along and said no I just need you to understand I got this I got you I just let you know that there's a little bit more I got to deposit in you to get you where you need to be I'm not going to leave you out here stranded I'm not even going to let you look bad I'm going to cover you while I'm working on you and while I'm working on you I'm going to keep pouring into you because I got plans for you I'm not going to let anything disrupt what I have going on in your life I'm going to use you to help those little boats come on into shore because when they see you standing every now and then they have to see you standing so it gives them the courage to stand. It gives them the ability to hold on. And they just say, if she's holding on, I'm holding on. If he going to make it, I'm going to make it. It's just the little boats that are connected to you. That you give them that ability to see your faith in action. Here he goes. He said, now listen. He gets up out of a sleep. And watch this. You don't have to become who you already are. You do not have to become who you already are. Jesus did not get up and pray. Lord, give me strength. Lord, anoint me. He didn't get up and pray none of that. He got up and rebuked wind because he knew who he was. He didn't have to pray because he knew who he was. Elijah didn't pray, Lord, let it rain. He said, tell Ahab, I hear the sound. I ain't got to ask God. I know the sound. I know I'm a prophet of God. I know what it is. So you tell Ahab, it's getting ready to rain. Because when you know who you are, you don't have to get up and become that. You get up and be that. Then he asked him a question. And I'm going to my seat. He said, where is your faith? Where is your faith? It would be different if I had not taught you. It would be different if I had not repeated it. It would be different if you were part of the crowd and not the inner circle to know what I was doing. But I opened it up to you before the testing came that you would walk in that place. I'm, I'm talking to believers. God is bringing you to a level that you're not going to be stressed out over situations and circumstances and when things get out of control because he's going to grow you. He's going to use you. He's going to mature you. He's going to let you see I got you in this. And he's going to let people see your faith so they can have faith to see what mature faith looks like in the midst of a situation. That's what God is doing in this hour. That's why, see, it would have been, you know, we, we've been in day, we, we had situations where it snowed a little bit and the next day the snow was gone. But this time the ice came. This time it dropped to 12 degrees. This time the ice remained. And it was prolonged. And God allowed it to be prolonged for a minute. But in it, I, I looked at something else that most of us didn't see. When it was, watch this. When it was prior to the storm, that COVID cases were racing out of control but God blew on the earth and everybody had to sit down and when everybody sat down the numbers went down he said I can handle COVID it's not bigger you don't hear me it's not bigger than me I got a solution that don't take no medication in order for me to fix the problem I'm God let me show you who I am so when he blew on the earth and that ice came and people sit down all of a sudden the numbers the question is 
Did we learn from it? That's the question. The question is, are we going to go back to normal behavior? Are we going back to what we just came out of when he showed us if you do what I told you, if you use basic protocol, if you get somewhere and sit down, I can deliver you out of this mess. That's what I can do outside of Pfizer, outside of Moderna. Nothing wrong with them. Take them if necessary. I'm saying, but God said, let me show you how I can do it. Uh, I want you to hear me. When he shows up, he shows us things if we choose to see. Jesus told them, he that has an ear, let him hear. But you can only hear by the spirit to get what God has for you. He that has an ear, let him hear. There is no other God like our God. I want to be, I need to make this perfectly clear. If you, in all actuality, I'm not against the COVID vaccine. Get that. I want you to, because somebody take that the wrong way. Say, I'm not going, if God instructs you, if it's in your spirit, your heart to do it, do it. Go and get it done because somebody will say, Pastor said, no, you have to make that decision. Come on. Of your own accord. I want you to understand that in these last seven days, when God allowed the ice to come and the snow to come and the winds to come and the rain to come, I'm telling you because we sat down, be still, be still, and know, and know that I am God. I got it under control. It's not bigger than I am. It's not larger than I am. It, the Bible said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And the answer keeps coming back every time. No, there's nothing too hard. And before it gets here, I bind that variant strain that's coming from Africa right now over your house, over your body, over your family. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I release unto you health and wholeness and prosperity in your body, in your spirit, in your mind, in everything that's a part of you. I release it right now that God makes you whole. I speak to kidneys now. I speak to livers now. I speak to conditions now and command that God makes you whole. I drive out every unclean thing. I bind the spirit of COVID. I bind every other spirit and that because we understand that whatever is attacked in your body it comes as a spirit of infirmity we cast down every imagination we come against every lie we destroy every scheme of the enemy I decree that your destiny is still intact in the name of Jesus Father we're grateful we are most grateful I, uh, we are praying for those who are homeless outside in this weather we're praying for those who still don't have electricity. We're praying for those who still may not have running water, who houses or apartments may be still cold. We're praying for restoration. We decree right now that that situation is temporary and now temporary has to give way to peace and joy and rest restoration. I declare it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I give you glory. Father, we bless your people. We thank you for being God in the midst of us. And we will not forget that you're on board with us. I praise you now. I glorify you now. In the mighty, matchless, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. My prayer for you in this situation, if you don't know Jesus, now is the time to turn, to get to know him in your life, to know the keeper of your soul. Now is that time. If you pray this prayer with me, God will accept you into his kingdom. You become a part of a royal family. You become a part of that royal priesthood that God talks about. 
So today, if you'll pray with me, Father God, come into my life. Be God in my life. Sit on the throne of my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I confess you as Lord of my life. And I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And because I, I'm saved right now. In Jesus name. I decree that you're saved. If you confessed it with your heart. That you meant every word. That I'm no longer in control. But he's in control now. And he's going to grow me. He's going to groom me. He's going to use me. He's going to prepare me. May God bless you. I want to give, I, I really want to give a shout out for all of those pioneers in black history because this is Black History Month. I refuse to overlook it. Although I think we should celebrate every month because we made contributions in months other than February. But we understand the recognition. But we just thank God for all the pioneers and those that are pioneers now that's pioneering to a new way and a different thing who not limited themselves to what they've seen but they're believing God for that that has not been seen we thank you for your expression for your commitment and your contribution to our legacy and to our history may God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you always be gracious unto you and give you peace you keep the faith God bless